more than a half century of active Army duty, Douglas MacArthur advanced his country's welfare by his outstanding military leadership, both in war and in peace. As Chief of Staff of the United States Army and as military advisor on the Philippine Commonwealth Government, this far-sighted leader performed an ever-increasing role in the development of America's military potential. For his heroic defense of Bataan and Corregidor, he received the Medal of Honor. An amusing thing happened on my flight into the Philippines. I was asked uh, on the customs declaration, what was the last time, my last trip out of the Philippines, when was that? I put down 1945. So I came in in 1945, now almost 70 years later I'm here, for the same reason that I returned to Tarawa, because I learned when I was there in Tarawa as a civilian that there were hundreds of Americans who still lie where they fell uh, in unmarked uh, graves in Tarawa. There are hundreds of those guys in Tarawa, but there are thousands of guys in the Filipinos. Uh, having been in a number of major battles, how comes it that there are 14,000 guys who were killed under MacArthur's return, so-called, and 7,000 of these guys remain uh, missing in action? It's not going to be a, a pleasant uh, experience for me. It's going to be painful. Hopefully it won't be deathly. <laughs> but uh, indeed, I feel that this is a worthwhile objective. In the Army, under MacArthur, in peacetime, he'd be the last guy I'd want to serve under because of his ego. If it was wartime, he'd be one of the generals I'd like to serve under because I think, as a, especially as an offensive general, he was a brilliant man. The importance of Corregidor and Bataan was that it delayed the Japanese from moving farther south. They wanted to get into Australia, and because Bataan and Corregidor held out for five months, it delayed the Japanese timetable. The Japanese were never able to get a foothold in Australia. If they had, it could have made a tremendous difference in how America decided to fight the war from then on. The reason I have contempt for General MacArthur is because he was responsible for the loss of lives of thousands of American soldiers in connection with his so-called return to the Philippines. It is called the War on Liberation, <laughs> but in my opinion, it should be called MacArthur's War. Oh, yes. MacArthur's reason for occupying the Philippines and his so-called return was he needed urgently to satisfy his ego. And somebody said, there's MacArthur. So I look out the window, and I wanted to throw something, but there's nothing convenient at the time. And what that means, Secretary of Commerce, Pritzker, is more important than 85,000 guys who died in the liberation of World War II. You don't know that, know that. You? Okay. I, know I want you're, you to you're be a sure. You're a gentleman. You have no personal animus to, towards me. I don't. Because we don't know each other well enough. Can we come in instead of standing here like we're begging for alms? Hi. How are you? Hi. Hello, I'm Leon Cooper. Uh, I, we're not going to film. We want uh, either or both, preferably, to introduce us to the president of the Philippines. I call it as I see it, and I think it's a goddamn shame that these two guys knew of our coming and refused to have anything to do with us. So anyway, here we are in this beautiful monument, a uh, tribute to the guys who did make sacrifices and just got killed. Let's not glorify their deaths by saying it was a sacrifice. They were simply killed, out and out, uh, killed by the enemy, in this case the Japanese. I am angry. I, I got the... I said that the cruelest people on earth, very cruel. I knew right away that was a kamikaze. I don't know why killing themselves in order to satisfy the emperor. Can't you imagine anything more stupid than that? I also saw how mothers, dead mothers, still feeding their babies. We suffered very much during the Japanese time. A tribute to the stupidity of mankind who thinks that the only way to resolve disputes is to go to war with our fellow men.
More than a quarter of a million Filipinos swore allegiance to the President of the United States and for all intents and purposes, legislation that was passed in Congress authorizing Filipino guerrillas and other organized military groups to be treated exactly as American soldiers were. They were not given any credit for all the things they did and helping MacArthur's regular troops to defeat Japan and drive them out of the Philippines. And I keep asking myself, why is it that uh, we have done such a rotten thing to these people who are truly our helpers in the Battle of the Philippines? Every time I recall that, it makes me cry. Because the final surrender, that was the surrender. That was the coming down of the Filipino flag and the going up of a flag. That means surrender. And in our family, it's very hard to surrender especially until now. It's hard for us to surrender. So uh, this misinformation continues to be made in America. This film is going to show the true story, what actually happened during the liberation of America. That you are all here. I'm honored to be among really great people, wonderful men who did so much to uh, liberate uh, your country from the ravages of a murderous bunch of bastards for whom I have nothing but hatred. One of these guys is 98. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to see such delightful, warm, welcoming people here in the Philippines. Uh, I love pretty girls. <laughs> <laughs> to preserve the memory and the sacrifices of our heroes because we believe that the best way to honor them is to tell their story. As the sun slowly sinks in the west, we said goodbye to Aju, Ave, Aque, Vale, to the U.S. Embassy, to the Philippines. Oh, I am a half-assed pianist, like most things that I am half-assed. Accordingly, the 1962 Sylvanus Thayer Medal is hereby awarded to Douglas MacArthur, class of 1903, United States Military Academy.